Hello guys, this is Jacob here. <coughs> I'm a little bit sick, so I will be coughing from time to time. Sorry for that. But in this video, I would like to show you how I made it so far. I've been testing <coughs> the Icebound Beam. I've been playing with Howling Gale for quite a while. Howling Gale felt really good in Time Mark 7 maps, but I found it later on that it is really hard to scale to higher damage and it was really uncomfortable in Time Mark 8 because of the low damage. <coughs> but in Time Mark 7, Howling Gale wins 100%. But I have a version or my version of Icebound Beam which I feel comfortable with showing you for clearing Time Mark 7 maps and if you invest a little bit more into it I'm able to clear Time Mark 8 as well, finally. But yeah, uh, let's go over the gear first. Like priority wise, <coughs> you want to craft your stuff. I will make a video on how to craft the stuff as well. It is really easy, you just want... Basically you want all of these mods. That's it, like plus skill and intelligence. Those are the first two mods that you want to craft. And then the rest, like spell damage, cast speed, elemental damage and added cold damage. And you finish it up with something useful on Dreamcraft, like additional damage while channeling, or additional spell damage, or uh, plus focus blessings, <coughs> with some bearable downside. So that would be your start and stuff. You should be able to craft it for around, let's say, I think under 30 FE. Would be realistic yeah the next thing that you want to get would be this helmet which will boost your damage because it supports your main skill with wind projectiles and then it also kills 60% of projectile speed into the damage <coughs> I mean the helmet is not necessary but will help you early on and is quite cheap upgrade actually for 35 fees uh, and the third thing that you want to get is like this armor or some other high energy shield base. This armor goes for <coughs> like the base version goes for 5 FE so really cheap you can even get it before the helmet so you are able to swap to low life. If you will be looking for a base with higher energy shield that go for a bit higher but still very affordable armor for what it gives you or, and what it allows you to do. So maybe craft your stuff and get the armor first. And then the helmet. And um, you can either use <coughs> this amulet, which I find like more universal. Because later on you will want to scale uh, intelligence a lot. And double intelligent intelligence row on that amulet will cost you around 80 FEs. So not cheap, but universal. <coughs> and they, there is one more amulet that I've been trying. Uh, which is this one. Howling Wind. You can get any of their there. <coughs> the roll doesn't matter the gale is what you want to get from that but for the price the amulet is not worth it in my opinion <coughs> so yeah this with at least double intelligence row and you should be good to go mine was i've bought mine for around 80 fe's yeah so that's the amulet and the rest i just crafted whatever i found with resistances and intelligence basically again resistances and intelligence resistances intelligence and some more damage and energy shield on the belt on the gloves intelligence resists some more damage and energy shield and on boots movement speed the most important row and then resistances intelligence and energy shield like with a straightforward gear uh, skill wise um, as you can see my beam is pretty long without if you don't set the build up as I have it 
uh, what I did not like about it was it it required you to go really personal with all monsters and rares on the map and what my setup allows you to do is you can snipe even bosses from like really long range like you can see even this far <coughs> and you can even put like uh, a different link I will show you different link setups and shoot even further like you can then snipe bosses out of the screen and I like that because it helps you with clear and this build focuses on clear and I tried to like set it up to be as close clear wise to the howling wind as possible at least for the time mark 7 maps so yeah let's get to the links um, Icebound Beam it scales from multiple projectiles and additional beams so multiple projectiles and, and uh, channel preparation what you want to get with ice, Icebound Beam is get as many minimum stacks minimum channeling stacks as possible so it keeps shooting you can see it here I have minimum of plus 3 channeling stacks so you have one base plus 3 is 4 and uh, Icebound Beam shoots the projectiles when it reaches max stacks so I have to generate like two stacks to shoot it what, will, what would boost the damage a lot would be a, for example a candle with plus one minimum stacks minimum channeling stacks which would put me to five which basically doubles your damage pretty much because you would be shooting every cast yeah let's get back to the skills so multiple projectiles channeling preparation that's needed for the budget and then for more damage guard for even more damage you can use spell control if you want even uh, better clear well, I don't find it like necessary but you can slot in focused beam then the beam shoots even fa even further as you can see <coughs> but I don't find it necessary so I'm using guard because it gives you more damage and also gives you a little bit more survivability through barrier and then the last link for clear you definitely want to use refracted prism because what it does it gives you two refractions and if we check the icebound beam uh, description uh, for every refraction uh, the every one beam refractions of the skill will be converted into two projectile jumps so when the projectiles that you are shooting hit something they will then jump to another target which helps you with clear basically so this is very useful link if you are going for a hard boss and you need more damage then you just swap that for control spell for example and get more damage through that link so for clear refracted prism single target control spell <coughs> or quick decision uh, for candles I have well, like nothing special just cast speed and some sealed mana to be able to reserve uh, higher auras uh, movement skill frigid transmission magic dash and grudge would be the main links I will swap this to periodic burst which will give you even more damage because it gives you more cast speed which means you stack your channeling stacks faster and you shoot your projectiles faster and the grudge is here for the chance to paralyze target which paralyze target takes 15% increased damage that's why you have it there if you have the energy and can <coughs> put in one more link you can go for blinding or for what I had here quick mobility which gives it more cooldown recovery curse of choice biting called terrain of malice that makes the big circle around you which curses everything around you uh, extended duration and preparation this combo basically lets you uh, you don't have to think about the curse it just gets automatically casted 
um, every eight seconds basically as you can see it is up almost all the time <coughs> um, another uh, um, empower skill secret origin unleash gives you additional spell damage and cast speed for every stack of focus blessing I am now from only the passive tree at 6 focus blessings so this is 18% cast speed and additional uh, how much is it 36 6, um, around 100% additional spell damage so yeah <coughs> secret origin unleash boosted with well fought bottle mass effect automated with preparation and extended duration to keep it up we can check the buff here so it should be up almost all the time as well as the curse pretty much so, yeah that's that and for the last one I'm using mana boil uh, if you don't need that much damage you can use mana boil if even that is a lot of damage and you don't need the damage and you want to be faster just slot in blurry steps and you will just zoom through the maps you can check it like it makes you faster and uh, from this season onward hopefully the blurry steps does not get removed when you use scales so it stays up all the time when you cast it so that's really useful so increases your movement speed for the middle road mana boil increases your spell damage gives you additional spell damage but if you need even more spell damage and you want to run for example time mark 8 maps and you don't have that good gear yet like me what allows me to run time mark 8 maps is aim but the negative side of aim is that it reduces your movement speed by 20% basically so you move slower but you deal a lot of additional damage and we can check it here like this is my magic find pack spirits and I should be around like 500 or 400 million dps <coughs> if I re-enter and everything gets on cooldown. Please select the calibration intent. Please select the calibration intent. Oh. For Wait for everything to pop. And yeah. So that's my magic find pack spirits. If I need more damage, you can set it up as well. You can set up a tab with damage pack spirit and just swap it mid fight like this. Now I'm on, on my damage pack spirits. I should be around one bill with them. Depending on your pack spirit setups, you might not get as good results as me. But yeah, you can boost your damage mid fight and then before the boss dies, you just swap, ba swap back to drop spirits or XP or whatever you are focused on at the time. <coughs> so yeah, that's that. For auras. Uh, um, uh, two main auras would be Elemental Amplification and Precise Projectiles. Um, early on, before you swap to Energy Shield, you will not be able to use Fred 50% aura and instead of that I would suggest you to use either Summon Flame Spirit for more critical strike chance, Summon Frost Spirit for more survivability because it regenerates your maximum life and max energy shield. Or you can use like uh, any imbue skill, really, uh, elemental ones, flame or thunder, or swiftness to be faster. But after you swap to energy shield, after basically after you get the chest armor, you can swap to energy shield and go low life. You can go the frigid domain, which is a curse, which is a aura which decreases uh, or which increases the damage enemies affected by the aura take so 
enemies that are in the, in your aura circle take 40% additional cold damage. Uh, boosting boosting it with area of effect, so it gets bigger. You get the idea. <coughs> and f for the last, to increase the clear a little bit more, I'm using Ice Imbue, which at its base version increases your chance to inflict frostbite. But through through my choice of supports, this does nothing. But monsters explode. Like when you freeze something and you kill it. It explodes for 10% of its maximum life in a 3 meter radius, so it gives you at least some source of explode from monsters. I boost the damage through imbue enhancement, which boosts the damage for over, by over 100%, and then I increase the area through increased area. <coughs> For the talent trees, goddess of knowledge, I will go slowly through them, uh, chilly, to be able to generate focus blessings uh, all the time. There's a point here which generates focus blessings as well, but only uh, through killing uh, frozen targets, but that basically does not work on bosses, so this is not something you would like to rely on. So chilly generates focus blessings. If you get focus generation from something else, then you can use winter for more damage. And inside here for additional spell damage basically. Um, if you are la running cold region or cold maps and you get slowed a lot and you don't like it, you can use burning touch, then you are immune, immune to frostbite. And you basically don't get slowed by the uh, cold watcher, for example. Yeah. The next, uh, let's check it like slowly here, like this. I'm getting all the points here, but the most important ones would be the plus spell skill level and max focus blessings. <coughs> and later on, you want to start stacking intelligence. Because intelligence boosts your damage, so intelligence as well. And these points I have here just for this 8% additional damage against frostbitten enemies. Because every source of additional damage, even little one, adds up and eventually boosts your damage by a huge amount. So yeah, you want to get this. And in the early stages here, uh, attack speed and movement speed definitely help, so definitely take these 6 points. Movement speed minus skill cost basically makes your skills free. As you can see here, I'm not consuming any mana, basically, when doing anything, because all my spells are free. And that's through this note, pretty much. Then the elementary tree. <coughs> In the elementary tree, the only thing I would change, but I did not do it yet, I would put these three points down here, because up here it boosts only my uh, channeling skill. Here it would boost the explosion from ice beam, ice imbues as well. So I am going to put these three points down here. Yeah, uh, attack speed and cast speed again, another minus skill cost. Then elemental penetration, elemental resistance and uh, elemental damage taken uh, like reduction. Here we have another source of intelligence and here we have a source of generating tenacity and agility blessings when receiving focus blessings. So that helps you with more cast speed and tenacity gives you more survivability. Definitely useful to have, costs you only pretty much one point. Yeah, so definitely take it. If you can get this from slates, if you get this from slates, you get you can put all four of these points somewhere else. Up here, I have. Uh, cast speed for channeling skills, another cast speed for channeling skills, and additional beam length. 
that's what makes my beam so long. Uh, not only that, that's only one source, I have another source as well. But my plan to the future is if I get plus one mag min channeling channel stack somewhere, either on the candle or I get the insanely pricey ring, I'm going to drop all three of these points because do these two points, if you get to minimum five channeling stacks, these two points would be wasted because you are already, already starting on the cap. So these two points would be wasted, so I will be dropping these three points eventually. <coughs> For the large passive points here, translucent, the, this is up pretty much all the time, because you have this, and you are dealing all, all three types of elemental damage, so this is 20% additional damage. If you struggle with, uh, if you have enough damage and you struggle with defenses, you can take adaptation which will give you physical damage reduction basically and physical damage most likely is the main source of damage that kills you most of the time. So yeah, for me translucent and the second one would be minimum channel stacks <coughs> just because you want to get as close to your uh, maximum cap as possible so this helps. The last three would be Warlock, plus two skills, plus one skill up here, that's easy choice and what else it allows you to do is it allows you to take off the beaten track which then lets you reserve more auras. I've made a video about this specific passive in the past so if you want check it, check it there like five minute explanation of, on, of how it works. Yeah. Damage, attack and cast speed, crit. Then here, uh, this point is really important. Once you swap to energy shield, energy shield charge cannot be interrupted by damage for one second after it starts. Really important note, definitely take it, helps you with survivability tremendously. Cooldown recovery speed, Plus one max charges helps you with movement a lot because as you can see I have three charges on my frigid transmission so I can teleport three times in a row and the frigid phone. transmission gets a cool, cool off or cool down off through freezing enemies so you can teleport through maps almost all the time. <coughs> so yeah, plus one max charge here. Then get the plus, one, plus skill level and I'm getting additional resistances here just to get more resistances on my character. I'm capped at 58, that's because I have the negative effect here that gives me minus 2. So yeah, try to get as high elemental resistances as possible. After you cap your elemental resistances try to get your erosion resistances as well. Now for the slides. I was testing the additional beam length, definitely want to get this if you want like the quality of life with the long beam and its clear potential. Oh that would be plus additional beam and another really important one would be immediately starts energy shield charge upon entering the low energy shield status. This in combination with the passive points from Warlock basically gives you one second of uninterruptible energy shield charge every time you enter below uh, 25 or 30 percent energy shield so it heals you for one second helps you with survivability a lot on the other slides i have nothing special just some all resistances intelligence whatever i dropped these two i bought the basis for the beam length and for the charge. Later on you want to get plus skills basically, plus cold, plus main, plus uh, persistent, plus channeling, whatever lets you get your ice beam, ice bound beam to level 30. <laughs> because then it scales the projectiles a lot. So yeah, that's for the passive points. I can show you how it goes in a map. 
in time mark 7 I'm using mana boil so I will swap it here and <coughs> how it goes in time mark 7 would be this and let's go through our benchmark map that we used in all our previous videos Demiman village and you basically just keep teleporting like this get to the boss as fast as possible because that's the main focus of Armin Time Mark 7 maps get to the boss as fast as possible with killing as many monsters as possible obviously so yeah this build costs around 120 FEs not the cheapest but the most money goes into the amulet which is not necessary and then the weapon with the helmet is like 40 and another fifth uh, another 30 for this so yeah armor is cheap amulet get it last craft your stuff get your helmet you should be good to go so this was time mark 7 I can also show you time mark 8 just because I tried it and I figured out that I already can do it the only thing that I need to swap for it is this to get more damage so time mark 8 Roll it, maximum like quality. Welcome to the Clockwork Ballet. How can I help you? And you can go. In Time Arcade, I'm trying to kill everything because maps cost something. You also are putting in the quality, and you won't have enough FEs to buy the map, buy the Netherrealm Resonance, and eventually buy the compasses as you start putting them in so yeah you don't want to waste any possible drop source you can get so it is a little bit slower yeah but time mark 8 maps is uh, the goal where you want to get to start farming effies uh, consistently basically i also have uh, like passive income guide on my channel so you can check it there as well that's another five minutes and will let you like know how I make my currency early on like possibly while mapping the tide still hasn't responded to my singing yeah as you can see energy shield started to regen a little bit like it's not much because i don't have that large energy shield pool but once you get a larger energy shield pool like 8k uh the energy sh the one second energy shield is really like noticeable because the mon more energy shield you have the, um, the more energy shield you can regenerate over the one second so yeah <coughs> Nothing dropped from there, okay. And now just snipe the boss from afar, don't get hit by its mechanics. Like if you get on... Like this was really slow because I did not use the passives of the character and my frigid transmission, but if you get on the boss and you frigid transmission on it to proc the paralysis on it uh, then it, it deals really like high damage so even though I'm using uh, beam length to get better clear you need to keep in mind that on harder targets you want to get up close <coughs> to put them on your tight and then blink on them to paralyze them which are additional modifiers that, st that stack on top of each other and gives you a lot of damage so yeah that's it 
then I just wait for it uh, to roll, for the for the cube to roll, and I go another map. So this is my like take on early progression of this ice beam. I hope you guys find it helpful. If so, please give give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next video, guys. Bye.